Hello, my name is Michael Keneally and this video is all about your Venus energy, your Venus karmas. The gifts that a deep astrology reading can give you and the need to do quite revolutionary healing work quite often if our Venus has problems. It's actually the first of my May 2024 astrology posts. There's also a second post which is about dealing with wounds to your power and coming into your full power as Pluto stations and also watch out for um, posts about the lunations upcoming in May 2024. So the point is that May 24 starts with planets in signs as follows. Jupiter is in Taurus, but Venus, Sun and Uranus are in Vedic Aries. Neptune, Mars, Rahu, Mercury and Chiron are in Vedic Pisces. Saturn is in Aquarius and Pluto is stationing in Capricorn. But the point is, one after the other, Jupiter, Sun, Venus and Uranus leave Aries and enter the sign of Taurus, creating a huge activation of Taurus energies in your life and also a huge activation of the life area which is the life area of the house that Taurus is in your Vedic astrology chart. You see Jupiter enters Taurus on May the 1st, Venus enters Taurus on May the 19th. This is of course Venus entering Taurus the sign Venus rules and Uranus enters Taurus on the 1st of June. You can go to my Star Wheel Astrology website to see the Vedic and Western charts and ephemeris on the May monthly page under the More drop down. But it's not just this huge pile up in Taurus ruled by Venus. It's also, we are in, well, at the time of the full moon of April the 24th, there was a revolutionary Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Aries. And so that energy is carrying on. And ask yourself, have I identified the life areas I need to bring that revolution current to? I mean, I have, I've written out a little sort of mantra, which I say every day to try and move my life and myself in the revolution direction needed. Um, but also on April the 8th, there was a huge eclipse with Sun and Moon at 25 Vedic Pisces, vastly aggravated by the Saturn-Mars conjunction in Aquarius. Now that eclipse created tumultuous tense energies generally. And so we're all of us sort of, a, to varying degrees, you know, vulnerable or maybe even confused by the eclipse and by sensing the revolutionary energy, but perhaps not being able to fully identify it and come into it. So in this video and its accompanying blog, what we do is look at um, the first of the issues of May 2024, the huge one of your Venus, your love, your wealth, your sense of value, those sort of issues. And your destinies 
in the Venus life area. And also, working through in May, we have to be aware of how the Taurus activation, the activation of the sign Taurus is affecting us personally. You know, that's particularly indicated by the house that Taurus is in our Vedic chart. And that must also be worked with as well as our Venus issues, Venus being the sign that, sorry, the planet that rules Taurus. So from April 24, energies of utter revolution last month and angry eclipse, we now have in the Vedic sign of Taurus a vast power activation occupied by Jupiter, Uranus, Mercury, Venus and Sun. Huge. What house or life area in your Vedic chart is Taurus? You've got to understand that. Otherwise you'll miss out and you'll just be left sort of confused and with opportunities running through your fingers. The energies of that house or life area that is Taurus and of your Venus issues, where Venus rules Taurus, are part of your destiny unfoldment. And that's going to be massively activated now by this Taurus activation. Now, if Venus standing in your chart and your life and destiny is good, this multiple Taurus transit will be so good for income, wealth, art, beauty and love. You do need a careful interpretation of Venus in your astrology and certainly get in touch with me for a reading and I can give that. But if your Venus is karmically disadvantaged in its standing in your astrology charts, then please do realise that this is the ideal time to work on your Venus. Get a reading from me about your birth chart and your year ahead with particular emphasis on your personal Venus destiny and Taurus issues. If your Venus is troubled, you can then hear my advice on how to work to heal the manifestation of your Venus in your life. Now the Vedic divisional charts called Varga charts give us supremely helpful advice as to how each of our planets stand for this incarnation. So the D60, the Shashti Amsha divisional chart, the Shashti Amsha Varga chart, provides essential to know statement of the karmas each one of us had run up good and bad, by the time of our death at the end of our last life. And the condition of each of the planets that was created by the karmas we had run up is expressed by a god, a face of the divine. And some of those faces of the divine are sweet and gentle. But because Vedic astrology, like Tibetan Buddhism, is tantric, some faces of the divine are utterly terrible. And we need to work with those to go through that, to connect to the ultimate divine and to express those wounded planets properly. So we need to find out what is your Venus's standing in your D60. And what is the face of the divine associated with your Venus? What karmas had you run up? What ancestral scripts have been applying? Also important is your Navamsha or D9 chart. The Navamsha provides a wonderful, absolutely need to know statement of your past life and ancestral issues your relationship issues in this life, plus, thirdly, 
the ideal ashram you need to move towards, the ideal way of life you need to move towards as you live this life. And then there's your D2 horror chart. And our D2 chart provides us with so needed to know statement of our ancestral issues, our gender issues, plus our wealth and energy flow issues. I mean, when I learn to look really deeply into my D2 and import into my D2 chart, Chiron and Lilith, I got such crucial to know issues that I had to sort out. And the same may be true for you. And by the way, your Vedic chart can provide a supreme statement of the standing of each of your planets in this life. Plus, crucial to know how your planets treat each other. What does your Saturn do to your Venus? Does it utterly trash your Venus? Or do they come to some sort of mutual arrangement? Rashi Avashtas gives a statement of that. But of course, we absolutely also need to hear our Western psychodynamic astrology. We are psychological beings. It's no good just relying on the Vedic statement. It omits the asteroids. It omits the wonderful insights of psychodynamic Western astrology. I mean, obviously, we absolutely need to know about Chiron, our existential wound. We need to know about Lilith, what is buried in our shadow and our unconscious. And those just aren't in Vedic astrology. Just a couple of details. There's many, many more. So I'm going through this detail because if you want to heal your Venus and need to heal your Venus and your Taurus issues, well, Venus and Taurus get massively activated this month. And this is a detail you absolutely need to know about. And having encompassed the deep detail and truth that my combination of Vedic astrology with Western astrology can offer you, my essential point is that then we also need to do healing work if problems are identified. Typical modalities, I have found, can be past life journeys, past life work. I've absolutely found that ancestral work is crucial. I have been doing many shamanic healings for 28 years and they can be so valuable. There's energy work, there's vision work. I do a vision journey every week to know what is going on in my shadow, my unconscious. Intention setting is also crucial uh, following doing such work. Tarot can be very helpful. I do at least one tarot session for me every week. So get a reading from me that will encompass amongst all the other details the crucial question of what healing must I do now for my Venus? What healing can I do now for my Venus and for the expression of my Venus? And you're so welcome also to book a relationship astrology reading from me, you know, if it's affecting your relationship. And again, I mean, I provide absolutely fantastic supporting reports and, you know, very detailed and caring analysis. You see, one point is that as a karma, many of us can be set up to fail on our Venus issues in this life. So the question is, how can we identify those karmic challenges our soul may have chosen for us to work with in this life? with our Venus issues, with our Taurus issues. You know, and, and I can most certainly give this. Let's just give a small example. 
I sort of mentioned a bit earlier when if Venus conjuncts Saturn. Now, Saturn can be putting a cold hand on your Venus love, value and money issues. Saturn can be harming your ability to relate socially because you feel of low value. There can be another Saturn-Venus combination which basically is very difficult but the person is able to learn that it is the simple things of life and love that can be their route forward and will give opportunity for wonderful relationships. Saturn in the second house of value issues is another obvious challenge. So if you have these sorts of challenges, Venus's standing becomes so important for you to know about and for you to heal now. And I say now because this is the great Taurus activation. It's happening now. And I say this also because we're still working with the Jupiter-Uranus revolutionary conjunction that was exact on the 18th of April. And those two are moving into Taurus now. It's also, I think, very important to get a reading if you're in acknowledged, very difficult, predictive time periods. I mean, one is if Saturn is transiting your 8th house, that's Ashtamashani. It's a real challenge. Another is, of course, Sade Sate. Put a little bit loosely, that's when Saturn transits through the sign before your natal moon, the sign of your natal moon and the sign after your natal moon. And that's like a journey to the abyss, a death and rebirth, it varies obviously from person to person. But it is so huge, it's, you, know, you really do get a reading if you're in Sade Sade or approaching it. So I want to give you another example of how your Taurus could be damaged and you don't know. That's why you need a reading. And that's to do with Bardica. You see, each ascendant has what's called a Bardica sign where the affairs of that sign are ruined. Um, there can be obstacles to social life, difficulties finding expressing love, lack of income and wealth emotional turmoil, digestive issues, can almost amount to a curse, a block, an obstruction and to blind spots. Now, if you have ca Vedic Cancer rising, well, Taurus is your 11th house of gains. You so need to know that and then what to do about it. And of course, for each ascendant, they need to know what their Bardica sign is. And by the way, if you have Venus placed in the sign Virgo in your Rashi D1 or birth chart or in your D9 Navamsha chart, again, Venus and the ability to show love is harmed. You need to learn about it and to start to do the healing. But with these insights and the methods I can put you on to or do with you, possibility for help is now at, at hand. You see, for a person who doesn't have Venus problems or Taurus problems, well, this Jupiter transit through Uranus can bring optimism, new ideas, new ways to manage finances. Ability to overcome challenges, enthusiasm for love and relationship. It can increase the range of happy things in your relationship. It can help you to self-discovery, empowerment, 
clarity about your wealth issues. This is the ideal time. But actually, if you do have Venus or Taurus issues, this is the ideal time to identify them more fully and heal them. And then you'll benefit from the wonders of the Jupiter transiting Taurus. Um, part of the activation is that the new moon of the 8th of May is in, yes, Taurus. It's in Barani Nakshatra, which is ruled by, yes, Venus. And the full moon of the 23rd of May has the sun, yes, in Taurus. So we're not going to be able to escape these issues. So I'm hoping that my presentation has set out the situation fully for you. And if you sense you could do with better astrological information and connection to healing, absolutely do get in touch with me. Thank you.